Before I get into it, I am, of course, of course, honored to be your host, Micah Cannon. Before I get into it, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, help me out a little bit. Without further ado, I'm going to get right into this video. Now, you guys already see the title of the video. No need for all the explanation. It's my Super Bowl prediction. And personally, I think this is one of the better Super Bowl matchups in recent recent times, right? We have one team who, despite them having amazing star power, nobody expected them to be here. They had a very, very uh, off season for their standards. However, the 49ers, who are ironically coming in with one more win, people expected them to be here. They had an amazing team full of stars. They start at the beginning of the season super hot. They end it super hot. One guy has a team or one team has a guy who is a Mr. Irrelevant. The other team has a guy who is now a two-time MVP and might even be a three-time Super Bowl winner by the time this Super Bowl is over. But I'm going to get into it. And first, I'm going to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, again, let's be honest. That regular season was nowhere near perfect. No one could have predicted the Chiefs being here. Nobody. If you walked up to me and told me that the Chiefs would be in the Super Bowl right now, I would have called you absolutely and utterly ridiculous. They finished the season 11-6, and six, and I know that looks good, but they were a middle-of-the-pack offense, ranked 15th in the NFL, only dropping 21 points per game, which is completely unheard of. People thought that there was a better chance of Martians coming onto the earth than the Chiefs being a below average, mediocre offense with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback and with Travis Kelsey pretty healthy. Not to mention that the Chiefs team also was in the top of the league in drops. It was a big problem, especially in the middle of the season. Penalties were a big problem, especially in the middle of the season. And to top it off, Travis Kelsey did not get a thousand yards for the first time since the Jurassic period. I cannot tell you the last time Travis Kelsey struggled to get to a thousand yards. He didn't get to it this year. However, the bright part is that the Chiefs defense was immaculate. And if you would have asked me again at the beginning of the season, I would have never told you that the Chiefs defense would have been carrying this Chiefs team. I would have never told you that. Over the last couple of years, the Chiefs defense has actually been the weak link of the team. Them stopping the runs has been the weak part of the team. Them rushing the quarterback has been the weak part of the team. This year, it totally flopped. The offense needed help, and the defense came in, and they were ranked second in the league this year. Chris Jones, Tripp McDuffie, Justin Reed, uh, Legarius Sneed, Ladarius Sneed, um, George Karloff, this, all of those guys played major, major roles on defense. Now, as for the path getting here, the Kansas City Chiefs ended up beating the Dolphins, and ironically, they were going against uh, Patrick Mahomes and a lot of those guys' former teammate and Tyreek Hill. They ended up beating the Bills, a team that really, really, really going into that game, a lot of people thought that they would demolish the Chiefs, especially with the Bills having home field advantage this time around. But the Chiefs found a way to get out of there. Then it was the first seeded Ravens. Everybody, and I mean everyone and their mother, was expecting and rooting for the Chiefs to lose this game. And let me tell you, it brings a smile to my face to see Patrick Mahomes show out to them haters, go out and say, hey, I'm still the best quarterback in the league. I'm still that dude. It, it, it puts a smile on my face to see that and say that. That's exactly what he did. Uh, Lamar Jackson did not play too good of a game, but... That's got nothing to do with the Chiefs. Their defense played really well. Lamar Jackson, in my opinion, he just didn't look like himself. Now, he did win the MVP last night. Congratulations and shout out to Lamar Jackson. But moving on to the 49ers, it is dang near a completely opposite story. Like, it's literally everything that the Chiefs went through except reverse, right? From the beginning of the year, this 49ers team was expected to be great, especially after we saw how good Brock Purdy was, how amazing he could be in that 49ers offense that's ran by Kyle Shanahan, actually a former Falcons offensive coordinator when my Falcons made the Super Bowl. Now, they finished 12-5, and five, and they were the number one seed in the playoffs. They were ranked third on both defense and offense, and they are both the favorite and the number one seed going into the playoffs and going into the Super Bowl. Now, Christian McCaffrey, although he did not win MVP, he had an MVP type season with over 2,000 scrimmage yards. Brock Purdy was another guy who was in contention for the MVP. He was amazing. 30 plus touchdowns, didn't throw that many picks, did not turn the ball over, was really, really efficient at the quarterback position. It was essentially a dream season. For the San Francisco 49ers, a dream season. Now, their Pats are getting here. Of course, they had the bye week in the wild card. They did not have to play as a one seed. 
that tends to happen. That happens all the time, right? They beat the Packers, a game in which a lot of people, uh, they, they were starting to count them out after that game. It was a bad game. It was a very murky, mucky, disgusting win, but the 49ers got on out of there. Now, the Lions, let me tell you, I was watching this game, and the Lions were absolutely demolishing the 49ers demolishing them up to about midway through the third quarter where the tide shifted, where it was one turnover. The 49ers went on to have an amazing second half comeback that led them to winning this game. It was crazy to watch. You saw CMC, you saw uh, Brock Purdy step up when he needed to. Funny enough, Brock Purdy did exactly what Lamar Jackson should have done in order to win that game. He was not afraid. He ran the ball. On the stat sheet, it's going to look like he played a bad game. But if you watch the game, if you watch the highlights, Brock Purdy was fantastic in that win over the Lions, especially in the second half. He was fantastic. It was one of the better quarterback performances I have seen throughout these playoffs. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to kind of get away from the the season, uh, the season's diary, right? The season's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the season's summary. I'm going to get away from that. Now, I'm going to go into my prediction. And before I do that, I want to get into the keys for each team. What the 49ers have to do is make Christian McCaffrey an X factor. You have to find a way to get him involved in the passing game and the running game. Another thing, Brock Purdy has to play well. Kansas City's defense is really, 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 really good. And going to my next point, you got to try and get ahead of Kansas City's defense. You have to, because if you don't, they're going to cause you amazing and crazy amounts of problems that you don't want to deal with if you are an offense. The offense is going to have to be quick. They're going to have to be fast, and they're going to have to develop plays to combat that Kansas City pass rush. You know what that means? That means quickness, quick slants, quick routes. The ball needs to come out of the quarterback's hands faster than ever. Fortunately, I think Brock Purdy does not have a hard time doing that. I believe he's a fast processor. He sees the field so, so, so well compared to the average quarterback in the NFL. Now, going to the keys that the Chiefs need to win. You have to get Travis Kelsey going. They were able to do that against Baltimore early in the game. You saw a winning result. You also got to limit the distractions, man. The outside distractions are what killed the Chiefs going up against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. It's what killed them, destroyed them. It destroyed every bit of momentum they had going into that game. The Taylor Swift stuff, the hater stuff, the Pat Mahomes wife stuff. The Chiefs need to find a way to put all of that mess, take it from here, And put it all to the side. All the Chiefs need to do is bring football to the field. They need to focus. Because last time, a barber had like caught COVID. They had all these crazy distractions going against Tampa Bay. And we saw a bad result. We saw a bad product. I don't want that to happen now. The Chiefs got to limit distractions. Also, catch the football. Y'all. You cannot drop passes in this game. This is the Super Bowl biggest game of the season. Cannot drop passes. You also got to let Pat Mahomes be Pat Mahomes. You have to live with the decisions, live with the mistakes. It is whatever. You got to let the superstar be the superstar. The rushing game also has to work. You have to be able to run the football against the 49ers defense. Otherwise, they're going to cause you nightmares. And you're going to have to find a way to throw the ball over top. I don't know who's going to be the one to step up. Whether it be Marquez Valdez, Scantling. Whether it be somehow Travis Kelsey going deep and catching a deep pass. Somebody has to go out there and make those big plays for Kansas City in order for them to win. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to get into my prediction. And this was hard. It was hard because I don't like all the distractions. I don't like the fact that it seems like the Chiefs are trying to prove something even though they don't have to, but I'm going to take Kansas City. I'm worried about it. I'm worried about how the Taylor Swift situation is going to impact the team. I'm worried about how Pat Mahomes is going to deal with all of a sudden becoming one of the most hated players in the NFL. I'm worried about that. I am. I am worried about it. However, despite those facts, the Chiefs know how to win. We are watching the most talented quarterback of all time. You can quote me on that. Aaron Rodgers, great. Tom Brady, great. All those other guys. Dan Marino, great. Pat Mahomes is the single most talented quarterback to ever touch a football. I would not retract that statement. I would not take it back. I refuse. He is the most talented quarterback to ever touch a football. It may be a slow start to the game, but I don't see that Chiefs defense giving up more than 20 points. And I just don't see, based on what we've seen the last couple years, I don't see how Kansas City loses. I don't know how they lose. Look, guys, 
There are teams that can win in the right circumstances. There are teams that can win when everything goes right. And then there are teams that can just win. Everything can go wrong. All heck could break loose and they can just win. And that's the Kansas City Chiefs. Ugly game against Miami. Super cold. Don't nobody want to be playing football. The Chiefs find a way to win. Going against the Bills. It's a competitive game all throughout. It looks like the Bills are going to win it. They're driving down the field. The Chiefs find a way to win. You have to go into Baltimore. You have to go into Baltimore, a number one seed with an MVP caliber quarterback, a guy that just won his second MVP and was one vote away from winning his second unanimous MVP. Find a way to win. Not to mention they have one of the best defense. I think the number one defense in the league is what Baltimore had. The Kansas City Chiefs just know how to win. I think Patrick Mahomes is the most talented quarterback ever. I believe he cares about winning. I believe that whole Chiefs team cares about winning. I think Travis Kelsey's going to be an X Factor. I believe he's going to have a great game. And I think, despite all the distractions, despite all of that, I think the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. Thank you for watching. I wish you nothing but the best. Stay loved, stay blessed. I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching.